Hello again. Welcome to take two of a quick solving a 3x3 system algebraically video by Mr. Steele. I am Mr. Steele, hence the reason why I'm narrating and not someone else. And the purpose here is to cover myself in case tomorrow in class things don't go as quickly as I'd like them to, so that you'll have an extra example to be of assistance to you on the homework. So, once again, we're going to solve a 3x3 three three system algebraically, and we're going to set aside for now like all sorts of visualizations of what the system actually is, which would be the intersection of planes. We're not going to worry about that. For now, we're just going to work on the computation and actually working through the machination machinations of working through a system like this. So remember, our go-to strategy is once again going to be elimination. We're just going to be working to eliminate one variable at a time until we get something we can deal with. In this case, it's going to be dealing with a 2x2 two two system. So if we can eliminate a variable, say z, we'll be able to get it down to a 2x2, two two, which we can solve using normal elimination, and nothing will be weird. Then we'll go to back substitution. So to start it off, I've got the problem already written here. I have to once again find my pen. So here we go. So remember, our first step is to make sure we copied the problem down correctly. I'm going to assume I did, just because I wrote the problem. So next, we need to label the equations. So you know what, I want to write this in black. So let's just change that black. Let's put this in black. So, we're going to label these three equations because with so much stuff being written on this sheet, so many numbers, so many variables, it's just easier to keep things straight if we have names for them. It's like when you walk in the mall and you want to insult some random guy's hat. You can't just go, hey, you, that's a stupid hat. Like, it'd be much easier if you knew the guy's name. Like, hey, Ted Johnson, that's a stupid hat. And then, you know, instead of having six different people in the mall say, oh, shoot, I wonder if my hat's really that stupid, it'd be just Ted Johnson that knows his hat's dumb. So, in fact, we give them names. That helps us work. So, our goal, remember, is to eliminate a variable. And I like to eliminate Z, just so we have X's and Y's, which we're more used to working with. So, looking at my three equations, A, B, and C, what I see is, right away, if we were to add A and B together, or A and C together, so there's C, there's A, we would get rid of Z negative z plus z is already going to be zero so in fact we would have eliminated z which is our goal so let's start by just straight up adding equation a to equation c so once again I'll copy them down just for clarity I don't want to do anything in my head when I've got this cool device to write with so there's equation a we don't have to do anything to it there soon shall be equation c and they're in position to go ahead and add them up so when we add them together, we get 5x plus y, 0, equals 17. And so there's our first two-variable equation. And so I'm going to give that a name, too. Again, all about giving things names. So I'll call that equation D, and I'll put in a little box instead of the circles I got up there. So there's one 2 by 2 or two-variable equation. It's half our 2 by 2 system that we want. So now what we have to do is we need to get a second equation. So it's actually a 2 by 2 not just a 2 by itself because that would make it lonely. So looking up here, I need a way to eliminate z again so that we have the same two variables left on this other equation. And what I see is that there's not an easy one like there was with a and c, but if I were to multiply a by 4, I'd end up with a minus 4z plus 4z, and that would again go to 0. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to combine equations a and b. The only difference is I'm going to have to multiply equation a by 4. So 4 is going to be slightly different. I'm going to augment it a little bit. I'll apply a little bit of makeup to it, if you will. So equation B, nothing fancy. It's the exact same thing. x plus y plus 4z equals 13. And then for equation A, we'll have 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times 3y is going to be 12y. 4 times negative z is going to be minus 4z. And then 4 times 24 is going to be 96, because 24 times 2 is 48, times 2 is 96. So just a little trick for multiplying for there. So once again, now that I'm here, I'm in position to eliminate, and so let's do the adding. So 8x plus x is 9x, 12y plus y is 13y, 0, all equals 109. So x, y, number, x, y, number, hey look, it's a 2x2 two two system. I like 2x2 two two systems. And again, let's give it a name. Can't call it Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, because that's something else. This is E. So what we have, two by two system. So we are left now with the task of trying to solve this two by two. 
because again, if we solve this and get x and y, then we can substitute them back up into any of the three, a, b, or c, and end up finding what the value of z is. So let's do this. 5x plus y equals 17. I'm only rewriting it for clarity. 9x plus 13y equals 109. And so now I've got to eliminate these somehow. I've got to use elimination, or I don't have to. I could use substitution here. That'd be okay. I just don't like substitution as much. Okay, so looking at it, I am probably going to eliminate y first. I've got a 1 here, so the easiest way would probably be multiplying this first equation times negative 13. So that would make these two guys go away. So my new system would be negative 65x minus 13y equals 17 times negative 13, which if I were a genius I would just know, but instead I'm going to multiply it on a little calculator off in the corner. That's going to give me negative 221. So not a beautiful number, but nothing wrong with it either. It's totally cool. So from here, my second equation, E, is exactly the same. We didn't have to augment it or change it in any way. And so now I'm ready to do standard good old 2 by 2 elimination. So combining these guys together, I'm going to get negative 56x plus 0 equals negative 221 plus 109, which if I remember right, believe is going to be negative 112. Like in reality, I'd probably check on a calculator and do the work off on the side. For now, I'm just going to say that you can use the calculator too. So in fact, I'm left with just solving negative 56x equals negative 112. So make a quick one on both sides. That's going to leave me with x equals 2, which is, um, well, it doesn't have to be a nice number, although we usually give you nice ones, but that should feel pretty rewarding. We started with this, now we've got x equals 2. So from here, what can we do? Well, we want to get to z, or y and z. So what I do is first, I'm going to plug it back into either d or e. So I'm going to try to solve for y. So from here, trying to decide which one to plug into, I'm going to plug it into d. I've got 5x plus y. It looks like it'll be pretty quick to solve for what y is. So 5x plus y equals 17. So I'm going to substitute it in 2. So 5 times 2 is going to be 10 plus y equals 17. And then you can, don't necessarily have to do the algebra here. I can actually see it really fast. We'll make a quick 0. y equals 7. So now we know x is 2 and y is 7. So we've gotten 2 thirds of our answer. Like we're almost there. We're really close to being able to say exactly what x comma y comma z is equal to. Like, and that's really what our goal is. So what do we need left? Well, we need to find z. So I need to plug it back into one of these three and find out what the value is for the third variable, c. Well, looking at these three, there's not one that should, you know, is wrong. Like, you could get the same answer in a, b, or c. But I'm going to choose c again because it's really quick. Like, plus z is just z by itself. I'll be able to solve for it really fast. So pulling out equation c, I've got 3x. Well, x, we already said, was 2. Minus 2 times y. Well, we already said y was 7. Plus z is equal to negative 7. So now I've just got to simplify, solve for z. 6 minus 14 plus z equals negative 7. This is going to be negative 8 plus z equals negative 7. And then I can add 8 to both sides, make a 0, and z is going to be equal to negative 7 plus 8, which is 1. So in fact, I have found my answer, which I'll commemorate with a different colored pen. I now know that x comma y comma z is going to be 2 comma 7 comma 1. And so there is my final answer. Now if I wanted to be 100% sure that I was right, I could go ahead and like substitute it back in. I could substitute in 2 comma 7 comma 1 back in here for x, y, and z and check to make sure that they come out to be true. But in fact, I'm kind of lazy. And I trust that my algebra is correct, especially because I had to do a second video version of this when I screwed up the first one. So in fact, if you want to be 100% sure, you got time on the test, check your answer, plug it back in. I'm going to say for sure that I'm right, because that was the answer I wanted in the first place. So again, I hope this video has been helpful. It's been a benefit to you. Um, if you have further questions, you can see me tomorrow morning. Thanks. Have a good night. This is Mr. Steele signing off after a little smiley face.